My man, long overdue, Andy Vances is on the show. He's got the crazy hype Williams filter on his phone. Andy, how's life? Uh, life's good, you know. Just just been busy training and with my coach, and just going to different places, getting the best sparring we can, and just keep it busy. So, talk, as much as you want to talk about talk about this camp and some of the some of the places you're you've been and possibly where you're at currently. Um, yeah, well, me and Charles, since my last fight, we've been in the gym since, obviously, you know, five, six days a week training. And then um, uh, for this camp, we actually headed out. We went out to Vegas to get some solid southpaw work because my opponent is a southpaw. So we got some good work in Vegas. And while we were in Vegas, uh, we got contacted to see if we wanted to get work with Shakur Stevenson. So, I mean, I figured what better southpaw than him. So. Now we're here in Houston, Texas, a little jet lag, but we're going to go get some work at the gym today, and sparring will be tomorrow, and we'll be out here for 10 days finishing camp. Um, These are like little extra things that I've, I've never done this many trips, this much focus on, you know, having little caps here and there. So it's been uh, it's been great in training right now. Um, The weight cut, I'll just deal with it as soon as I, I go back home, but um. Yeah, it's been busy, you know. We've been we've been everywhere from the East Coast to the West Coast and back. So, I mean, this that must be a good feeling. Talk about that that adjustment because during some of some of your biggest fights, you were balancing working and driving and all these sacrifices. How is the sacrifice of just not being at home and being on the road so much? How is that paid uh kind of weight on you? Yeah, well, it's it's been in a good way because, like, now the only thing I focus on is, you know, boxing. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, calling off or seeing what they're going to say or getting back to finish the weekend work. So, I mean, to be honest, there's a lot of stress off my shoulders because work's always been something I've had to balance throughout my life. But, yeah, it's just, yeah, having the flexibility and being able to focus on just boxing, it's, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. So how did this fight come about? You're fighting uh, Henry LeBron. I remember about a year ago, we had talked about this fight in the gym in Salinas or Hollister. And how did this come about? What were the pieces that made this fight happen and all that stuff? Oh, I'll tell you the story. So, I mean, I am obviously a month ago. um, uh, Like it wasn't a bad person. It was good people, but. I don't know. I just I just felt like I had to do something on my own with my old manager, Peter Kahn. I just called him to split ways because I, I don't know. I just felt like I was leaving my career in the hands of someone else who might be a little too busy at the moment. And like, I understand it's business, but I just felt like I'm getting older. I'm not getting younger. I got to move now. I can't can't take my time as far as like when I'm going to get the next fight. So. Um, the deal was after my last fight was we were going to be in the ring within a year. Um, that was the whole thing. And, you know, my manager said no tune-up. So I was like, that's fine as long as I'm in the ring before the year ends. But, you know, as we were approaching like September or August, September, I was just kind of like, man, like, like it's going to be a year already that I've been out of the ring. And I think activity is key right now, especially in my career and at my moment. Um, I'm pretty much in my final stages where I need to make a big turnaround. So anyways, long story short, I cut ties with Peter and I went on Twitter to post a post saying that, you know, I had no manager, no promoter. And then I got a lot of retweets, a lot of likes. And then I got invited to the the MVO podcast. And then obviously I talked to you and you told me to get on that and also chicken talk. And anyway, so I went through with the podcast kind of, um, you know, stated my situation. I had a lot of feedback as far as the posting on Twitter is is something that's a big deal. I never thought it was that big of a deal, but I guess, you know, I got to be more active on there and whatnot. That was like a lot of advice that I got. So um, then I heard that a manager was wanting to reach out to me on the MVO podcast. And I remember I mentioned to you specifically about her, um, some girl named Emily. Pandel- Pandelicus. Who, yeah, Emily's my, good people. Yeah, you know? Emily's good my, people. She's now my manager. So 
I feel like after the conversation me and you had when she called me, honestly, she I got a good vibe from her when we talked, our conversation. And that was it. It kicked off from there. But I would say from 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 Twitter, from just hearing from a from a credible source like you gave me the confidence to like make the move. Like I'll be honest, like knowing what you thought about her, I felt comfortable like and I was still hearing her on the phone, obviously, but um it all happened from Twitter, bro. It just happened from Twitter. So I mean that's really how how I got a manager was on Twitter. That's pretty that's a glowing endorsement. A Twitter. I think the one thing to remember about managers too is you could have the best manager in the world, but if you two don't mesh in the way you communicate, it's not going to really work. Like a manager is a tricky situation where not every manager is going to work for every fighter, but probably most managers at the top of the sport are there for a reason. Yeah, she's cool. She always texts me like, hey, like, how was your flight? Um, Did you land? Like, just always checking up on me like, hey, how are you feeling? And to be honest, the, the last time I had a manager do that was Herb. You know, Herb would always call me, check up on me, kind of see how I was. So, I mean, it's just it's, – it's it's pretty cool, pretty different, but in a good way, it's positive. So that reminds me of something. I was editing a video for, like, we're doing this podcast interview shows on uh, Wednesday nights or something we're going to do on the channel. And one of the clips I saw was – I forget which – tachi palace fight it was it might have been the angel hernandez fight but on my cell phone i filmed you and herb and it was your brother and your dad walking down the hallway of the tachi palace casino and for some oh. reason someone had picked out that clip and i was like that was a good clip to pick out because it's like here they're just looking for famous people right so it's like here's a teofimo clip here's a sinise clip here's just people i'd filmed and then it was like you walking in that hallway and it's like that moment wasn't that big of a deal but to me that was like even when i filmed it i was like man this is going to be a moment we look back on because that's just how many times did you do that walking with your manager out of a hotel room with your fight gear to the venue yeah yeah he was always there hell yeah he would always go see me in the room and we just kick it for hours in the room we would just kick it he'd just be asking me questions and like i remember when i fought for the title he was asking how i felt and then as soon as he, he saw it was good and that I was going to fuck this dude up, he went to the betting lines and put like 20 racks on me. But, but yeah, he was hella cool. He was hella cool. Hella funny. I remember when you fought Casey Ramos, they stopped taking bets because we yeah, kept yeah. betting on you. Yeah, yeah. It was hella funny. A lot of people made money. I mean, I made some money too on myself. So it was I sent my other boy to put money on me. But it was funny, man. Yeah, that dude was hella cool. Herb was like, he was like, he was like a manager, but he was like my boy. We go kick, we talk shit, we bullshit, and like he was hella cool. The way he would be able to kick it with me like a friend was tight. My favorite herb, some of my favorite herb memories would be like, it's Tachi Palace, and for those that never have been to Tachi Palace, it's in the middle of nowhere. And he'd be like, Loki, Basil, let's go find a place to go <laughs> because we'd just be stuck in the middle of nowhere. And then you were like hanging out getting in the zone for three hours before you went to the dressing room and it's like let's find a pool hall or somewhere to eat <laughs> and i just yeah, remember yeah, because you, but do you remember how like tachi palace it's just that one small yeah yeah there's, that's all there is to do so you're either you're either gambling eating there or you're not doing nothing yeah there's nothing to do and then they had that little bakery at the end and everyone would wait by the bakery to kind of go to the event. So then like the bakery was like the place where people would always get their lunch because everyone yeah. was like sitting near this yeah, bakery yeah. that was probably the worst place to eat. Yeah, it was hell of funny. Good times, what, good times. Yeah. What have you learned from your pro boxing career about styles? Like, because I look at your style, right? You're great at distance control. You're a very high IQ boxer. But I feel like what you've started to learn is that boxing is also a physical sport and that you have to kind of merge your distance style with a little bit of physicality. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the lessons you've learned firsthand in boxing? Uh, yeah, I would say like um, just, yeah, I think I think a lot of my career has been managed on distance from obviously when I paired up with uh, Flores Sr., um, that was my whole game was on distance from when I was like seven and oh to 16 and oh. And then obviously when I trained with uh, Cordon senior, 
it was a little more like, you know, a little inside, but still very, very reliant on distance. But I would say the biggest thing I learned, I learned in boxing is like, you gotta, you gotta play all fields. You gotta play front, back, forward, mid. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing we're doing right now is, is playing all fields from distance, mid range, short range, and being able to like put these things together. Um, and, and obviously, um, some of the things too is is be able to walk a fighter down. I think that's something that you got nobody's seen me do yet. So, you know, I know with Albert Bell, I was doing it towards the last rounds. Uh, Luis Alberto Lopez, I was doing it in the last rounds. But I think people are going to see that um, fairly early from the beginning, Bell. And um, yeah, boxing is just a, a never ending sport that you learn. And, you got to be able to catch punches, slip punches, roll. Like, it's just there's different distances. Obviously, from distance, you can do a lot. You don't really have to do too much head movement and stuff. But as, as soon as you start closing the gap, you have to move your head. You have to use your hands for defense because your distance is gone. And I think that was that was the main thing I learned with uh, Coach Charles when I came to him was I just I didn't know that, that mid-range and that short-range uh, – defense I didn't know defense like distance was my defense if I didn't have distance I didn't have defense and I think that whole transition was tough just being able to like to understand that like like once you get once you don't have distance you technically have to rely on your hands slips your rolls so to tell a different yeah I mean the knock on you was when you had your big big fights as a prospect was you weren't letting your hands go. Would you feel like some of the not letting your hands go was just that you were comfortable at a certain range and you weren't comfortable at other ranges? Yeah, and I think um, you know, coming up from seven and zero to because people don't know from seven and zero to fourteen and zero, like I had all knockouts. So I think I was relying on my counters and and knowing that when I countered them a certain way, they were gonna go down. But obviously. Once I started reaching the ten round fights and and the and the ten round fights, that's when things started changing. Where like these opponents, they're not gonna go down one shot or a left right. It's like I needed to follow up. And that's something I've been working on, uh, for a while now. Yeah, you you had a period where you kind of fought like Adonis Stevenson, where like you were really heavy on like that power hand, and you're looking and you're waiting to snipe, you know. Yeah, yeah, but um. Now nah, I would say I felt like myself, you know, I was always myself, but, um, yeah, um, it's just always been, uh, you know, just trying to put it all together. So I'm, I'm really, really excited for this fight. And this is a, this is a make it or break it fight for me, to be honest. I, I should beat this guy, but I just got to stay focused and I just got to listen. And, um, if I'm winning the fight, but my corner doesn't feel it's, um, uh, like, how do you say it? Like it's, definitive. Uh, it's, it's yeah. Then hey, I'm gonna get those instructions to just obviously go for it this time. So, um, I'm not worried. I'm in great shape. Um, I just gotta finish camp, make weight. That I feel like that's my focus right now. I just want to finish camp, make weight, and I don't think too much about the fight. I already know like it's gonna be a fight. Like I'm gonna have to make it a fight, so that's fine. If, if that guy wants to like move around and run around, like. Like, trust me, it'll, it'll be in our favor. What, a, uh, any, uh, the last time I saw him stuttering, but eight round fight, is this an eight round fight and any thoughts on that? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm going to be on his ass from the first round. I have to, like, I, I'm right away going to do it. Like, because, because I already know, like, I don't know why, like I'm, I'm those people that like, um, like once I get in my rhythm, I get going. So like, honestly, whether things are looking good or bad the first round, I'm just going to keep going because I already know as soon as I get my rhythm and I start landing my punches, like, like that's it. Um, sometimes I've noticed in sparring lately, I do have a little rusty little first round. I don't know why I'm just, I'm starting to like, I'm like downloading this information, just trying to see all this stuff. But um, yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to be on him from the first round. I know it's a round fight, but at the same time, this guy, he gets really fatigued, like right at four rounds. So I mean, if I could get him fatigued in the third round quicker, whatever, you know, like um, like my goal is to get him fatigued like soon. So and if he wants to fight, like, trust me, like I'll be there to fight. So whether he decides to box or to fight, like um, I'm, I'm just going to be ready for that. Like if he fights, I'll be happy to fight him. I mean, I got nothing to lose. I'll be happy to fight him. 
Um, and if he wants to box, I'll be, I'll be able to hunt him down. And, and I mean, that's my goal right now. That's I mean, my that goal speaks to something program. that you've always talked about with me is conditioning. You think conditioning is just as important as skill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we want to be aggressive, but we want to be smart. You know, I'm not the guy. I'm not the fighter to like if people are expecting, oh, and he's going to be like Marcos Maidana. Like, fuck no. Like, I'm not Marcos Maidana. I'm not this Mexican slugger. It's going to throw punches and, and walk in like that. Like, nah, like, don't get me wrong. I'm going to be pressuring behind my jab, but just obviously initiating and countering the counter and just, you know, putting shit together. So, um, yeah, I think well, conditioning is important. I think conditioning is, uh, my dad's always told me conditioning is, uh, when I joined boxing, he told me, hey, I don't ever want you to be that fighter in the ring where, you know, you have all the skills in the world and you lose because you got tired. Like, so he just always told me he was very big on conditioning. So I've always been like that with myself since a kid because um, he made it like he installed it in me. Like, hey, it's your religion. Like, I don't care if you're getting beat in the fight. Like, I never want your condition to be that you weren't able to throw punches or defend yourself because you didn't have condition. And I think I've proven in a lot of my fights. I could say I've proven that in a lot of my fights. Conditions has never been an issue. It's never been that I get tired or I can't finish to the last round. I think as the rounds go on, I get stronger and I finish my fights, like, very strong to where people are wondering, what would I do in a 12-round fight? So um, my conditioning, yeah, it's number one. I've focused a lot on conditioning. and I'm going to finish out here, you know, doing my miles, my sprints, and yeah. How was it to see Albert Bell? Oh, it was cool. It was cool to see Albert Bell and just, you know, running into him. I see him sparring was cool. I mean, like boxing, they, hey, you learn from everyone, whether I fought someone or not. Like, it's, it's cool to watch someone I've been in the ring with, it's, especially if they do good, you know. But, um, yeah, it was cool to see him in the gym. Like, honestly, he looked good in the gym sparring. He was slippery, not getting hit. I mean, I was just proud of myself that I was able to get to him. So it was, it was pretty cool. Do you feel like the boxing industry is getting behind you for this opportunity? Because I feel like a lot of fight fans, media, and even boxing insiders want want to see you do well in this fight. Yeah, I think everyone wants to see me do well. I think, um, you know, they, 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 I don't know. I just feel they, they, uh, people just know I'm deserving of it. And um, honestly, God willing, I just, I just want to get the win. Obviously, in dominant fashion, but. I just that's this is really what I need for my career. Um, it's really a make it or break it type fight, and I'm I'm actually I'm I'm blessed that people are like with me and behind me on this fight, and um, I just want to get it done, man. I just want to prove to myself and just move forward. Well, I mean, one win, you're you've got a comparable kind of skill set to Tevin Farmer. You're very likable. It took him a few. I think the other positive is the last guy that was sparring Shakur. To get ready for a B-side fight that I can remember is uh, Kenny Sims, and he beat Elvis Rodriguez. So you're right. around the right people because Kenny Sims took the exact work you're getting and went in and beat Elvis Rodriguez, who was Godzilla at the time. Yeah, yeah, I remember that fight. I remember seeing that fight live. Bro. Obviously, not that Elvis Rodriguez got beat, like, demolished and knocked down, but, yeah, he got out Fox and he got, like, he did get beat. But, um, hey, he's doing well now, though. I mean, he's still going, right? Like, ever since his, his loss, you know? So, um, I think, yeah, I think that was a good win for Kevin Sims, uh, who I actually known. I, I know Kevin Sims. Like, he doesn't know me, obviously, but I, I've been following him since the amateurs when he used to fight Jose Ramirez because we were all in the same bracket, 132 pounds. And Kevin Sims was, like, the national amateur guy that knew how to switch from southpaw to orthodox, hella slick, hella good had hella fights. So I always remember and seeing him and it's um it's awesome to see where he's at now. Obviously at the weight class he's at, but like hey that dude's come a long way. Like he was like a number one dude in the amateurs, I remember. It's also cool when a guy maybe is a good amateur, struggles as a pro and then fights their way back. It like shows something about their character too that they're yeah. not gonna stay down. Yeah, even that's what I'm saying. Elvis Rodriguez, even though he got beat, like he came back on those pay per view cards, knocked people out. It's like, hey, like he's not giving up. He's still a top name. Um, yeah, it's just cool when you see someone that doesn't give up and, and, and reaches their, you know, their success. It's tough. 
Okay, I'm going to ask some topical. Uh, Ryo lost last night to Edwin De Los Sotos. Um, it felt like that that was a very fast move up for Ryo at 12-0 and 0 to be in that type of fight. I don't know if you caught the fight, but what are your thoughts kind of on that type of fight? Yeah, me and my coach saw the fight. We were watching it on the airport. Obviously, we were, we were at the air, in the airplane and whatnot, and when it was going down. But, um, I mean, I think Rayo's a great fighter. I think Rayo's a great fighter. Um, uh, but my coach did say something that, like, it is true. Like, they don't really practice defense too much. Like, you know, a lot of it is hands up, you know, um, type stuff. Like, he does have defense, but in the fight, I just feel he was just uh, relying on his hands up style, taking a lot of shots from a, a, obviously a hard hitting guy. And hey, that just shows like you got to stay focused. Like that's the last minute opponent. Obviously, the last minute opponent was training. He's a guy that had power, but like, hey, you just got to be ready. You can't just you can't let the you can't let the moment get to you and think you know you're like. I don't know. I just feel like you got to stay focused. Like, cause so you think he lost his focus when the opponent possibly changed? Well, I mean, he wasn't getting ready for a softball. I mean, obviously you got to be ready for anything. I mean, what if you do get an opponent change and, and then just, I mean, boxing, boxing is crazy. It's uh, just got to be ready. I mean, I've had opponent changes early in my career and it, and it does throw you off as far as like, you know, you're training for orthodox and they throw you a softball, especially on a good level. I think it matters. Like, I think it really matters. It, the whole, the whole switch of like, you're not fighting a right hander. Now you're fighting a softball. I think, I think that's when it's like very crucial at that level. I think if you're getting ready for a softball and there's a last minute change where you find this right handed guy, I think it's a little more doable just because, you know, you fought right handers your whole career. It's kind of like the normal. Uh, but yeah, those last minute opponent changes, I had one too early in my career when they changed it. And then later I was fighting a Southpaw guy and I was thinking like, damn, like I haven't sparred no one Southpaw and I got to fight this, this guy Southpaw. Um, and it was a hard fight for me. I won the fight, but it was like, it threw me off, you know? No, I hear what you're saying. Um, to me, what really stood out was he was fighting Jezreel Corrales, which is a spoiler. Stay on the outside distance guy, opponent switch, and he's fighting a banger who's short and it's like you go from fighting a tall guy who's gonna move to a guy who's gonna pressure you and the maybe he knew a couple of weeks out right maybe they're like hey this guy's having visa issues but that's still a big jump in your mindset of having to chase someone down versus how having to pick your spots yeah yeah no it plays a difference no for sure just everything all together and then obviously it's the moment too big card um LA a lot of fans a lot of people um so yes yeah, what did you think of Abner uh Abner uh he looked tired he just he looked tired he looked explosive to start but it looked like he got a little fatigued but I mean shit for four years not fighting damn that's all right I mean he looked like he looked you know he looked like he hadn't fought in a while and Okay, because there's always been kind of since you've been out of the ring, there was always rumors I had heard that your name had been brought up with Abner Morris. So I was curious. Obviously, this fight's your main main objective, but is that a fight in the future that you'd like to visit, or is that are you looking for different type of fights if you get? Through oh this? yeah, I would, I would fight out of mine. Honestly, the way he boxes, I'll beat the shit out of him for sure. I will. I, I, I would take advantage of all his errors. He just has a lot of mistakes. He was getting hit with a lot of right hands. Yeah, nah. He, he, he Honestly, uh, uh, he should walk away from the sport unless he wants the sport make him walk away from it because uh, it's just boxing. You got to be you got to be in it all the way, you know. Um, if he's just coming in it to make his last dollars, like, I don't know. He's asking for trouble, but I don't know. He looked good, but he needs a lot of improvement. Obviously, he's been off for so long. and I don't know. He just looked very fatigued. He looked very tired, you know, running around. and just um, He just looked tired. He looked tired. He started really good, but he just got really, very tired. I think conditioning has always been a thing for him. I've noticed in his fights, he always does get tired, so I don't know why. His body didn't look the way I would expect a pro athlete's body to look heading into this fight. 
Yeah, well, I mean, four years off. I mean, and if he hasn't been in living in the gym, that's what I'm saying. You either got to be in it or you got to be out of it. You're either going to be in it all the way, meaning even though you're not fighting, like you're in the gym. Like, that's what I mean by in it all the way. Like, you don't got to be fighting, but if you're in the gym five or six days a week, like, you're doing your job, you know? No, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah. What was the Vegas experience like for you? It was, it was cool. Charles threw me in with some fucking hitters. Um, it was good. It was good. He found a good Southpaw kid that's out there, uh, a little national amateur kid. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people know about him. Uh, his name is Kaipo. So the first day, the first day I went out there, we sparred with him. And I mean, I was thinking about, well, because my coach was always talking about him. So I was like, I knew the kid was good. I was like, damn, I'm going to see what this kid is about. Like, obviously, he's good. Uh, I knew he was good, but the kid, he was good. He was good to where it is. It's far, it was back and forth, but I, I think the way he was able, he was taking my punches and the and the certain like moments I would give him, like he took them well. So honestly, it, it surprised me. That was probably the sharpest work I had out there with the southpaw. Um, he he was really good. His timing was good. Everything was good. So I felt like it just made me sharper. I was just getting sharper as the week went on. Um, I think when I got there. It's just a diff. It's a different work out there. Like these guys are sparring every week, every two week, every two days a week, and you could tell. You could tell the sharpness, like the timing and the sharpness that they have. Um, but yeah, it was it was up in my game for sure. I felt I was getting sharper, like just getting the hang of not rushing things, like being a little more patient. And you know. Well, I think the, the thing about Vegas is you get so many people who are traveling from so many places who want to be a pro boxer. So you just have so many different fighters that you can get in there with. Yeah, that too. We saw a lot of people from different places just trying to make it happen. So it was pretty cool. It was good. It was good. It was good. I mean, I've been to Vegas before, but it, it was a good experience. Are you going to cool. be out there for the Canelo Golovkin fight? Nah, we're, we're coming back to the, uh, the 14th and then pretty much we're winding down. I'm well, I'm going to wind down um, and just obviously go to the gym. Once I'm back, just go to the gym every day because then we leave again uh, Tuesday. So yeah, we're pretty much just going to get back and train at home, just finish up and then take off. we got to take off again. So we've been we're in Vegas, now Houston, and then obviously we've got to go to Jersey. So we've been, we've been everywhere right now. Okay. So that's a full one controversial last question let's let's end on a crazy note is obviously gabe senior gabe jr both a big part of your career you've said some crazy stuff at times looking for the fight but honestly i feel like that's not really who you are and that's not the long lasting memory you want of those people um, because they served a big part of your career would you like on a public platform to speak on maybe that situation? Not maybe all the things that have been said, but kind of what you'd like to say. Obviously, Gabriel just lost to Gio Cabrera. Um, what what would you like to say at this moment around that situation? Oh yeah, just I mean, hey, I I mean, if they're listening, like I like I told senior, hey, I got no, I got no problem with them. I was just very disappointed at the fact how everything went down and how everything happened and. But you know what? Like, hey, the kid, the kid, obviously, he's, he's, I mean, um, he should, there's a lot to realize about the sport now. I think all of us and um, just even as far as the whole, the whole stylistic stuff and everything going down. But yeah, I've, I've, I've called him out just because, you know, I wanted to fight little Gabe and, and, and it was the moment. And, and you know, I, I would still, you know, consider it. But, you know, it's just the kid, you know, um, obviously, I wish him the best. Uh, you know, he's obviously going to have some time to himself. Um, and, and I wish them both the best. Hopefully they go off to to venture maybe different ways. Who knows? But uh, just, just yeah, just, you know, just, uh, hey, I got nothing against them. It, it's, a, it's a fight people want to see. Um, but obviously things take a turn, life changes and I wish them the best. I wish them the best. And, um, uh, you know, we we're very close at one time. And if I ever see a senior in public, um, I'll, you know, I ain't got, I got nothing against them. Well, I just brought that up because some of my best boxing memories are like you, me, 
Gabe Sr., Gabe Jr., and we're at Black Bear Diner. And we're driving yeah. back from L.A., from Manny uh, Robles' gym. And then we're, you're fighting the wizard. And remember when there was like a lightning flash and we're like, there was a flash. And it's like, those are some of my favorite memories in boxing. And I think for the average fan, they view this situation as something that I don't think you intend it to be. Yeah, nah, nah. We had a lot of memories. I, I always think about stuff like that. Like, hey, we had we had memories. Remember when we were at, uh, like, you got to remember, we had memories in Thanksgiving. Like, we were at his pad Thanksgiving, at his pad for Christmas, um, watching fights or something. And and even when we went to New York, I said, I remember that trip a lot. I remember a trip went to LA. That's a funny story. That's funny. I'll give you a funny story right here. This is a funny story. He'll think back to it. He'll start. He'll be like this fucking guy. I remember when we were, always. I remember we were in LA. This is like me and Lil G's first trip. Uh, I think it was like one of our first trips. We went to LA, and it was me, Little G, Zach, and I forgot who else. But uh, Zach's dad had gone to Lincoln, and we went. We we're in the hotel, like messing around. We're in the hotel messing around. We're just like chilling, and Gabe's like, "Hey, like." Like, this is what I really found out. Like, I can't mess around with Gabe like that. Like, because like I said, it was like one of our first trips. So he's like, hey, guys, I'm going to jump in the shower. So he jumped in the shower. And then I was like, I was like, hey, little G, like, I'm going to open the door. And I'm going to fucking, like, open the curtain. And then little G went along with me. He goes, all right, all right. So we're all laughing. You know, we're, we're still kids. You know, I think I, I was an adult, but I acted like a damn kid. So I'm all pick locking the door. I opened it. And then I busted the curtain. And there Gabe was. Bro, when he got out of that shower, he was pissed. I remember he went up to Lil G and he just, I mean, I, I even walked away. I was like, damn, this guy's mad. But I think that's when I realized, like, like I can't mess around with him like that at that level. But it was it was funny, bro. It was a funny moment. I remember uh, he was mad. That whole day he was mad. And he was just like, man, you guys fuck around too much. It was, it was just so funny. That's a crazy one. So, Andy, how can people support you moving forward and for this fight besides getting ESPN Plus, besides buying a T-shirt, besides following you on social media? Um, They could just, they could just, man. I mean, how could they support? They could just, fuck, just follow me. And, I mean, tune into my fight. And uh, obviously, you know what I've been through. You know, you know, you know, it's been a long journey and just, yeah, dude, if you just want to, I don't know, if you want to, fuck, stay motivated, fuck, follow me. Okay, there you go. If you want to stay motivated, follow Andy. I think everyone's excited. I wish you were on the main card. I think a lot of people are interested to see this fight. But wish you the best, and I'm definitely going to be tuned in. I got my ESPN Plus subscription. I will be watching. All right, Lukey, appreciate it, bro. Appreciate your time.